President De Gioia, Your Excellencies, Your Excellency Sheikh Ali bin Ahmed bin Saif Al Thani, members of the board, members of the faculty, parents, ladies and gentlemen, members of the class of 2019, good evening, salamu alaikum, and welcome to the commencement exercises of Georgetown University in Qatar School of Foreign Service. Please remain standing for the national anthems of the state of Qatar and the United States of America. We will offer the opening prayer. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق يقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم كلا إن الإنسان لا يطغى أن رآه استغنى إن إلى ربك الرجعى صدق الله العظيم In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, recite in the name of your Lord who created, created man, created man from a clinging substance. Recite, and your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen. Taught man that which he knew not. No, but indeed, man transgresses because he sees himself self sufficient. Indeed, to your Lord is the return. Thanks. Thank you, Jamal. Most Reverend John Carroll. First Catholic Bishop in the United States took formal possession of the land on our hilltop in Maryland in, 19, in 1789. And it is that date that we observe as our founding date. It was not until 1814, with enrollment passing 100, that Georgetown's then president, Reverend John Grass of the Society of Jesus asked our first student, William Gaston, who by then was a North Carolina congressman to introduce a petition into Congress for a federal charter. It is our venerable custom to begin academic ceremonies with the reading of that charter for the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia. To discharge that office, I have the pleasure to present Mary Matson, Secretary of the University. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are, or from time to time may be, the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges or universities of the United States, and to ensure in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission to such degrees. Signed, Langdon Chivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Gaillard, President pro tempore of the Senate, approved March 1, 1815, James Madison, President of the United States. Thank you. It is my great honor to introduce this year's commencement speaker, Her Excellency Ambassador Sheikh Aliya bint Ahmad bin Saif Al Thani, the permanent representative of the state of Qatar to the United Nations. <clears throat> Her
Her Excellency Ambassador Alia's dedication to furthering the humanitarian goals of the UN and Qatar are truly an inspiration. After obtaining her master's degree in international studies and diplomacy from the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London, Her Excellency started her career at the Supreme Council for Family Affairs. She then moved to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, serving in various roles at the UN in New York and Geneva. As permanent representative of Qatar to the UN in Geneva, she represented Qatar at several organizations, including the UN Human Rights Council, the World Health Organization, and the International Labour Organization. In 2013, Her Excellency assumed her current role as the permanent representative of the state of Qatar to the UN, joining a line of permanent representatives dating back to Qatar's accession to the, essential, accession to the UN in 1971. She is the first woman to represent Qatar in this role. She has authored and facilitated numerous UN General Assembly resolutions covering education during emergency situations, improving natural disaster responses, as well as resolutions aimed at drawing attention to families, autism, and democracy. We are delighted to be able to call on her tonight to share some of her wisdom with our graduates, and by her example, motivate them to further this grand project of developing a more peaceful, equitable, just, and empathetic world. Your Excellency, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you now to the lectern. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. President John Degoya, President of Georgetown University, Dr. Ahmed Dallal, Dean of Georgetown University in Qatar, members of the faculty, members of class of 2019, proud parents, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by thanking you for honoring me with this opportunity to give this year's commencement speech. I also congratulate Georgetown University on its 100th anniversary since the establishment of the Edmund A. Welsh School of Foreign Service. I would like to acknowledge the tremendous positive contribution of Georgetown University to Education City. It is exciting to see that Qatar campus is a vibrant, multinational community of outstanding students, faculty, alumni, and staff dedicated to the best in scholarship, learning, and service. This would not have been achieved without His Highness, the Father Emir, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, and Her Highness, Sheikh Hamouza bin Nasser shared vision of Qatar's future develop development, which led to the creation of Qatar Foundation, the driving force behind the establishment of Education City. Dear graduates, this is your day. Well done, after years of hard work, you did it. Here you are as graduates of this great university, ready to conquer the world. We live in a world of complex and interconnected challenges to the people and the planet climate change, inequality, the negative effects of globalization, attacks on human rights, and threats to international peace and security. Effective multilateral cooperation is the only means to address these challenges. The journey won't be easy. It will require the determination to serve your country and community to the best of your abilities. Looking at my career, I am extremely proud and honored to serve my country as the permanent representative of Qatar to the United Nations headquarters in New York. Under the wise leadership and vision of His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. In the face of the unjust and illegal blockade imposed on our beloved country, His Highness has set a worldwide example for leadership, political skills, resilience, and determination. His Highness has been praised for his excellent leadership and work towards peace. Last September, at the United Nations General Assembly, his Highness told the audience of world leaders how Qatar, despite all measures taken to cause harm to its security and stability, has strengthened and consolidated its role as a key partner of the international community. Qatar has depended its active role in multilateral forums, demonstrating to the world its deep commitment to peace, security, sustainability, and prosperity. His Highness also mentioned that this was possible because of the determination and re resilience of the Qatari people and of the multinational residents in Qatar, 
Qatar's investment in human development, and prioritization of education in the country and beyond. I would like to note that His Highness was one of the first leaders to clearly establish the fundamental link between educating youth and ensuring their comprehensive participation as key to boost collective security, as well as support peace, stability, tackling terrorism, and violent extremism, and building sustainable development efforts all over the world. In this era of populism, let me tell you how, pride, how proud I am to be representing a country that sustains multilateralism in policy and in practice. Through my work in multilateral positions, both in New York and in Geneva, I am honored to have played a substantive role in a number of initiatives and processes that indicate Qatar's commitment to areas related to respect of human rights, social justice, and sustainable development. Some of my proud moments was facilitating UN General Assembly resolution that have significant impact on populations, communities, and individuals, such as a resolution on the right to education in time of emergencies, and a resolution that established an International Day for Autism Awareness, also being a co-facilitator for the political declaration for the implementation of the Global Plan of Action on Combating Trafficking in Persons, and last year, facilitating the review of the UN Economic and Social Council, the UN body that is as at heart of the UN system to advance the three dimensions of sustainable development, economic, social, and environmental. I'm also extremely proud to have been at the forefront of efforts to advance the principle of accountability for the most serious crimes committed under international law. I've co-led efforts to establish the international mechanism to assist the investigation and prosecution of persons responsible for the most serious crimes under, interna under international law committed in Syria. This mechanism is the first and critically important step towards justice after years of unchecked atrocities in Syria. Most importantly, it tells the victims that the crimes committed against them will not go unpunished. I'm delighted to represent a country that understands the key importance of women empowerment at home and abroad. In this regard, I would like to praise His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, for his efforts to increase the number of women in the Foreign Ministry. We have now 337 female diplomats out of the total 1,062 diplomatic corps, approximately 30%. His Excellency, has been clear that this is not just a question of number, but also of effectiveness in fulfilling the mandate of the ministry. Now for the young woman in the audience, I want to tell you, don't be afraid to dream big. I had the privilege of working with Her Highness Sheikha Moza bint Nasser. I learned from her, from Her Highness, that women's empowerment and gender equality is not only about numbers, but also about changing a society's view of women themselves. Change for Women in Qatar took into account the preservation of our national identity. Change can, came when Qataris realized that many fundamental rights were already enshrined in our values and in our religion. You are the next generation of women leaders who will honor and build upon the legacy of brave women before you. You must pave the way forward. The world needs you to deal with conflict, poverty, climate change, inequality, and exclusion. To the proud parents, you need to congratulate yourselves for planting the seed of success in your children. I would not have done it without my parents. My father, a visionary mentor, and a great diplomat and a great statesman. My mother, my first and best teacher. My parents taught me that glass ceilings are often a mental barrier, that I had the necessary strength to become my parents taught me that, that glass ceilings are often a mental barrier and that I had the necessary strength to become whom I am today. They taught me also to take unexpected opportunities, to know myself, and to fight for what I believe in. Dear graduates, remember that small steps can make a big difference. Take risks, be bold, and don't be afraid of failure. When you see something that's not fair, not right, or not just, you must gather the strength to stand up and speak up. Stay passionate. Don't give up. Congratulations, class of 2019.
Thank you, Your Excellency, for your inspiring words. We would like to demonstrate our deepest gratitude with a gift. The gift will be presented by President DeJoya. We come now to the conferral of degrees. Dr. Amira Zain, Associate Professor at the Georgetown University in Qatar, will call the names of the degree candidates, where candidates have achieved Latin honors from cum laude, meaning with distinction, to magna cum laude, meaning with great distinction. This will be noted before their name. Similarly, those inducted into a number of national honor societies in recognition of their excellence will have that society mentioned before their name. You will recognize this as three Greek letters. Each candidate will come forward to be hooded, to receive the diploma, and to be congratulated. After all the candidates have crossed the stage, Dr. Joel Hellman, Dean of the School of Foreign Service, will present the candidates to the president, who will confer the degree in course. Graduating magma cum laude, Alpha Sigma Nu and Phi Beta Kappa, Obada Khalid Diab. Graduating cum laude, Shiza Abbasi. <laughs> Yara Ahmad Shafiq Abdelmajd, Abdelmajd. Zakaria Abbi. Amani Abida. Muhammad Abu Hawash. <laughs> Abdul Aziz Muhammad Abu Nada. Maha Yusuf Al Abdullah <laughs> Hala Maher Al Attar.
حيا محمد العطية دانا الدانا علي الدربستي شهد بدر العمادي العنود جمال الغول سميرة جمال الحاج عبد جواهر مانع الهاجري نورا علي الهدفة آمنة أحمد الهتمي Graduating cum laude, Mozen al Hinae. Muhammad Ali al Jabri. رفيعة سعد الجاسم Graduating cum laude Alpha Sigma Nu Asma Al-Jihani نورا عبد الله الكواري <تصفيق> ابراهيم حمد المانع <تصفيق> فاطمه عبد الله المرواني فاطمة محمد المهندي عبد الرحمن خالد المغيسب العنود محمد المهندي بشاير الملا graduating cum laude هيثم الملا نجوى العبيدلي
Munira Muhammad Asada. Al Anud Jasim Al Thani. Haya Al Walid Al Thani. Himyan Khalid Al Thani. Jasim Al Thani. Maryam Salim Al Wahibi, <laughs> Abdullah Safwan Al Zaidan. Rawan Muhammad Al Zaini, Dana Asad, Nabila Asaro. Catherine Ann Danolitz. <laughs> Malik Deep. Hala Ashraf Eid. <تصفيق> Sara Al Amin. Graduating cum laude Shirin as Sayed. <laughs> Dua Ihsan Hassan. <laughs> Amy Victoria Hoka. Diala Jandali. <تصفيق> Jamal Khatib. <تصفيق> Jong Bo Lee. Carola, Caroline, Carolina, Sonia, Lubinos. <تصفيق> Mahira Mahjoub. Mahjoub. 
ريهام أحمد منصور خالد عبد الحميد معرفي ليال أحمد مشهدي ريم مأمون محمد شيلا ناصري جسمين مارسيلو بيريز ريتيكا رامش Graduating, graduating magma cum laude, alpha, sigma, nu, and phi, beta, kappa, John Christian Roblin. <laughs> Zobash Shaker. روان عبد المنعم يوسف It is now my honor to present Dr. Joel Hellman, Dean of the School of Foreign Service, who will formally present the candidates to President De Joya, who will confer the degrees. Candidates, can you please stand? President De Joya, I have the honor and privilege to present to you these candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Foreign Service. These students have been duly examined and recommended by the faculty and approved by the Board of Directors. I therefore ask that you bestow to them the degree in course. By virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University. I officially confer upon these candidates the degree of Bachelor of Science in Foreign Service. Congratulations. Members of the class of 2019, you richly deserve the congratulations, congratulations you have just received. You have all worked hard and achieved much during your years at Georgetown. None of you, however, has managed to do this on your own. 
you have benefited from the knowledge and wisdom of your professors, and you have been supported by family and friends. So now, it is time, graduates, to turn around. Please stand. Turn around and applaud the people who helped you get to this day. Graduates, graduates, please be seated. It is now my privilege to formally present Dr. John J. DeJoya, 48th president of Georgetown University, who will offer closing reflections. Thank you very much, Dean Dalal. We're grateful to you for your leadership and for the many ways that you have supported our students as they achieved this special day of commencement. For 14 years, we've welcomed a new class of students into our community here at GUQ. These are some of the most extraordinary young people from around our world. And each year, they share with us their talents, perspectives, and immense capacity to act in service to others. They have chosen to pursue their education here at GUQ, the degree of Bachelor of Science in Foreign Service, with our School of Foreign Service, a school with a 100-year tradition of service to our world. We could not welcome such an exceptional group of young people without the dedicated leadership of so many members of our community. From Dean Hellman, who has brought such exciting vision and energy to our School of Foreign Service these past four years, to Dean Dalal and the Dean's office here in Qatar, who provide important resources and support to our students, our faculty and staff, who shape the experiences that our students have here each day. And we could not do all of this without such committed partners here in Qatar. We're honored to be joined by so many distinguished guests today. His Excellency Sheikh Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Saud Al Thani, Minister of State, members of the Qatar Foundation, ambassadors and members of the international diplomatic community, as well as representatives of other institutions here in Education City. I wish to extend our deep gratitude to each of you for your presence here this evening. I also wish to share our appreciation with our commencement speaker, Her Excellency Sheikha Alia bin Ahmed bin Saif Al Thani, in a year in which we reflect on a, the long tradition of global service in our community Madam Ambassador, your insights and your service make this day that much more special for all of us, and we're grateful to you for your presence. And to everyone who joins us today in celebration of our graduates, I want to thank you for being here for this occasion in the lives of our students. And members of the class of 2019, congratulations. It is a joy for all of us to be able to celebrate this moment with you. All of your hard work, the challenges that you've overcome, your service, your achievements, everything that you've done at Georgetown has brought you to this moment. And it's a great privilege for all of us to be with you at this very special time in your life. This commencement marks a milestone in your lives and also in the history of our community. 
This commencement is the fulfillment of a vision established a century ago, the creation of an academic community invested in the study and practice of the Foreign Service, a place devoted to a new kind of public servant. This was a prescient step taking place five years before the establishment of the Foreign Service of the U.S. Department of State. In an academic ceremony to mark the founding of our School of Foreign Service in 1919, one year following the armistice that brought an end to the First World War, in the presence of government leaders, faculty, and students, much like today, Father Edmund A. Walsh, a Jesuit priest who led the establishment of this new school, addressed the assembly and spoke to a new global reality. He said, I quote, the awakened consciousness of essential human rights and their reciprocal obligations together with the realization of the very definite lesson that the peoples of the world constitute one huge family whose interests are common and whose members are interdependent has proved to be one of the most valuable byproducts of the world tragedy now happily ended." Close quote. Father Walsh's words imbued our new school with a global mission building on the international character of our university and setting forth ideas for engagement and cooperation that have sustained us for 100 years. And he went further and he charged our work to ensure that our nation could fulfill its obligations with a distinctive kind of character. Again, in his words, quote, a great soul, a great heart, a great mind, close quote. So as I look around this room with students of so many nations graduating this evening, with our faculty from around our world and our partners who share our belief in the power of education, I am filled with hope and confidence. Hope in the recognition that at our best, we are one global family whose interests are common and whose members are interdependent. And confidence in all of you that you will contribute to ever stronger global community, that you may find within yourselves a great soul, a great heart, a great mind in service to our world. This is the work you have been engaged in the most important work in which you could be engaged in during your years here, the work of formation, the work of self-understanding, of coming to terms with the fundamental question of personal formation. What constitutes an authentic life? Here we have sought to provide a context shaped by our global mission in which you can wrestle with this question to learn what matters most to you, how you best connect to others and to our world, to understand your most authentic, your deepest, your truest aspects of your identity, the person that you are, the person that you are meant to be, the person that you are called to be. Authenticity, when we have alignment between our actions and our most deeply held values. And we must always be seeking a deeper alignment between our values and our actions, a deeper sense of authenticity. And the most profound idea that animates our tradition of learning, when we seek the very best in one another, we'll find the very best in ourselves. It's this commitment to one another above all else that provides us the opportunity to realize all that we are capable of becoming, all that we are capable of contributing as members of our global community. 
While you have engaged in this work of personal formation during your time on this campus, we hope that you'll continue this work in the years ahead as you move beyond our community. When you arrived here, you embarked on an incredible journey, one that now continues beyond this place and beyond this moment. Today you take with you not only the knowledge that you have learned, but also the values that have shaped your lives here, the character that you have forged. All of you are prepared to bring your talents, your knowledge, your compassion, and your imagination in service to our world. And as you depart on this day of celebration and accomplishment, we're grateful for all the contributions that you have made to our community and we look forward to the ways that your leadership and service will contribute to the common good of our global community. It's a privilege for all of us to be here with you tonight, to recognize this important milestone in your lives and the beginning of the next step on your journeys. Now with this commencement, you embark on another very special time in your lives. This is your time. And we are honored to share this moment with you. Congratulations on your commencement. Thank you, President DeJoya. Please stand and join, join the class of 2019 in the singing of the Alma Mater, led by Normain Joyce Aguinaldo Sison, class of 2019. You, you will find the words and music on the last page of the, of the program, which given the bilingual structure means right in the middle of the booklet. Following the, sign, the singing of the Alma Mater, please remain standing for benediction, which will be offered by Reverend Mark Bosco of the Society of Jesus, Vice President for Mission and Ministry at Georgetown University. Let us bow our heads. Good and loving God, we come to you this evening with gratitude. You call each of us to be part of this community at Georgetown, blessing us with the educational legacy that began with Ignatius of Loyola and has been passed from generation to generation. 
You call us to stand in solidarity and kinship with all who share our journey on earth. And you invite us to live lives of active service rooted in justice and love. Help us to build on the wisdom of the past with a vision open to the opportunities of the future. Dare us to move beyond what is known and secure, broadening our imagination and deepening our trust in you. Fill us with wonder and awe as we receive these gifts with open minds, generous hearts, and passionate spirit. As our graduates move to the next stage of our journey in life, and we prepare ourselves for the coming year ahead, hear our simple prayer. When we are weak, be our strength. When we doubt, be our faith. When we are anxious, be our peace. When we are discouraged, be our hope. And when we are lost, come and find us. When we are in darkness, be our light. And when we are sad, be our comfort and joy. Grant us this, Lord, as we call upon your holiness to fill our lives with love and grace. Amen. Please remain standing at your places until the platform party and the students have recessed. All are cordially invited to join Georgetown's newest graduates at the reception in the library. We would like to continue the tradition of taking a photograph of all of our recent graduates, and so I ask all graduates, after you have completed the recession, please return to the stage for a photograph before joining your families in the library. The 2019 commencement exercises of Georgetown University in Qatar School of Foreign Service are now officially closed. May Georgetown live forever. <laughs>